Hello. Hi. I know this video is very, very long. You don't have to watch all of it. The first section of the video is going to be me playing through the song at 50 to 75 percent speed. Um, so you can watch my hands playing it and also look at the C music thing on screen and see what notes are being played if you can't quite tell. But you can watch my fingering basically is what this camera is for. Um, and then after that's done, I'm going to do a pseudo mini breakdown of the song. Some of the harder parts, some of the tips I have in order to be able to play them because the song is very fucking hard. <laughs> so um, all of that is going to be time stamped both in the description below and also on the screen right now so that you can work on a section, come back to this video later if you want, watch me play it again, keep working on it. Because uh, this song is going to take, for me, it took about six months to learn it to a point where it felt comfortable all the way through. So this is going to be a lot of work if you want to learn it, but I strongly encourage you to. It's it's so much fun to play. So uh, without any further ado, I'm going to actually play now. Okay. <laughs>
Welcome to your piano lesson. Um, before we begin on the nuts and bolts of playing it, uh, I have a disclaimer slash spiel that I want to give really quickly. Um, if this is your first time watching this video, please do listen through this because I'm saying it for a reason. And um, if you've already listened to me say this, feel free to skip to the timestamp here. Cool. Okay. So, um, Will Wood's music is a lot of fun to play. Uh, if you weren't aware this music, sorry, I'm reading off of my phone, so if I start sounding like a recorded voice <laughs> on a hold line, um, sorry, I'm just bad at not scripting things. Um, so if you weren't aware, this music styling borrows heavily from klezmer music, which is the music of the Ashkenazi Jewish people. Um, which is Jewish people originating from generally Central and Eastern Europe. So I'm telling you this because as a Gentile or non-Jewish person, uh, because I think it's important for anyone learning this style to understand the roots of the music that they're trying to replicate. Uh, and I think it would be in bad faith for me, a goy, to teach you to play distinctively klezmer inspired music without calling it what it is. So two things. The first, if you are also a non-Jewish person, a Gentile, I really strongly encourage you to learn about Ashkenazi Jewish culture and Klezmer's role within it. As you are already on YouTube, go down a little rabbit hole, learn about it. Uh, learn about the people and the culture of the music that you're taking inspiration from. Go search Klezmer on Spotify, see what comes up, see if you like it. It's honestly, it's, it's, <laughs> I, I can't, I don't want to paint the entire genre with one paintbrush, but oh my god, is it it's such enjoyable music for me. Like, I, I genuinely really, really, really love Klezmer. Um, so the reason that I'm telling you to do all of this homework effectively, uh, I don't... If you want to learn more about the style of music, it is important for me, as your musical educator, to tell you to come at it from the perspective of musical appreciation and not the perspective of musical appropriation. So that is that. I really encourage you to look into Klezmer. Um, a person that I would really recommend is Robin Seletsky's series on Klezmer on YouTube. Uh, she has a whole playlist about it. Her instrument is clarinet, not piano, but uh, 
really, really, really good information in there. And a lot of the skills, obviously not all of the stylings are going to be super transferable to piano, but um, a lot of the stuff that she talks about is super transferable and helps teach you a little bit more about the genre. Um, so the link to her Klezmer playlist uh, is going to be in the description as well. Uh, secondly, it is not my place to speculate on Will Wood's race, religion, ethnicity, cultural identity, heritage, etc, etc. And I am not pretending to know any of these things about Will Wood by saying that his music borrows heavily from Klezmer. Please do not start conversations in my comment section speculating on any of those things. If you, as a Jewish person, want to comment on how his music makes you feel in your own cultural identity, perfect, great, love that for you, that's amazing. But please keep any comments speculating about anything that he has not publicly stated about himself out of my comments section and absolutely, definitely out of his inbox. This might be the first time you're hearing about Ashkenazi Jewish culture and klezmer, which is really, really awesome. And oh my god, you're gonna have so much fun learning about it. But neither myself or Will Wood is gonna be the person to educate you on that. So please be respectful. Thank you. That is all I had to say. That's my spiel. Now to learn the instrument that we're all here for. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, the opening riff. Oh, actually, sorry. Let me start my C music recording. Uh, perfect. Okay, synced up. Okay, so the opening riff. Um, there are two fingering options for this. With the, sorry, so one, two, three, five, four. And then I put my thumb on the D here and then cross my second over. Um, the other fingering possibility is, sorry, I hope this is loud enough. Um, the other fingering possibility is second on the D, thumb on the B flat. Um, it's basically whichever one you can play faster, because <laughs> uh, the tempo for this song is approximately, I think when I was learning it, I set it at 144, uh, depending on the performance, though, Will can play it, I think he plays up to, like, uh, definitely 160, possibly even, like, 168, so that's real quick. So if you can... Uh, with the second over like I do, cool. Um, if that's not, if that's um, not gonna work for you, sorry, <laughs> use your thumb on the B flat. And you can still play it like just as fast. It's honestly just a matter of preference. Um, my word of caution though, if you are doing the crossover method like I do, um, when you are playing, your elbow is gonna try and fly out. When, like, I don't really know if you can see, but I'm gonna try. It's, when I hit that, maybe it's both actually, when I hit that A, my elbow is going like full pile driver situation. Like it is flying out of the seams. Um, and that might seem to you like that's gonna make me go faster if my elbow's gonna do most of the work getting to that A. It's not. It's really, 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 really gonna slow you down. So, um, <laughs> if, try and train that out of yourself. I, I was using my hand to hold my elbow close to my body so that it would stop doing that so I could play it fast, as fast as I needed to. Um, I actually, <laughs> I tied the sleeve of my house coat to the rest of my torso when I played the riff to get the habit out of myself um, to actually be able to play it. Um, it's not a good habit to get into. It will slow your hand down tenfold. It's not good. Watch your elbow. Keep, keep really, really good control over 
uh, the upper part of your arm when you're playing this section, um, and you'll be able to play it quickly, but just watch watch that bad boy. Uh, left hand is just the chords. Um, I didn't want, I don't know if this is actually how he plays it, but I didn't, I, my left hand, it's not great. <laughs> um, so uh, I don't want to be worrying about it while I'm doing a mile a minute up here. So what I did was just uh, G minor, which is the first chord, and then C minor, but I, I, I was trying to do these with the least amount of movement possible. So that's why they're all, you can jump around if your left hand is um, at all competent, but um, <laughs> mine isn't. So G, uh, C minor here with the, the G in the bottom and then the C, E. Uh, so, sorry. So the D there, you can even do a D7 if you are getting a little overzealous, um, but D shape there, you can see. No, I'm sorry, it's C major, not C minor. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> uh, and then it's E flat, so it's, you know, the G position, but just E flat on top. Uh, and then B, C, triple it. Oh God, that's not sounding good at all. There you go. Sorry, I'm gonna have to play it fast first because I'm it's it's all muscle memory now, so when I'm breaking it down and trying to remember how to do it, it's it's uh, actually quite difficult. Desperately trying to find a way to play this uh, mordant turnaround trill situation that wasn't uh, using my fourth finger because my fourth finger is quite weak. Um, th this is really just the, the best way, the best fingering that I found. Um, if you can do a clean turn and like make it sound good with those fingers, second, first, and third. It's definitely a lot easier, but I, I couldn't make it sound um, good, <laughs> basically. So uh, I had to practice a lot to get that turn with my fourth finger there. Um, yeah, it's, a, sorry, it's gonna be hard. That turn, if, you, if your fourth finger is weak like most people are, that turn's gonna kinda suck. Sorry about your luck. Uh, <laughs> uh, for this section, um, Will doesn't usually do triplet arpeggios, mostly because they don't sound as good as uh, whatever the fuck he's doing with both of his hands going up the keyboard. Um, if you really want, y y you can... Well, it, it's it's just, you're going down G minor, and then what I do is, instead of continuing the G minor on this low D here, I just, oh, now we're in the fifth, like we're on the fifth of G minor, and actually now we're on the fifth chord, which is D major. And you just work your way back up the keyboard uh, with uh, D major triad. Um, yeah, it that that's pretty open for improvisation. Uh, I did it like kind of the most basic way possible because the song's hard enough. Um, but you know that's not how he would play it. Feel free, feel empowered to do something else. Uh, if you're not familiar with arpeggios, oh my god, how have you gotten this far into the video? But uh, G, uh, third on D, second on B flat, 
the thumb on G and then back third and you're just gonna cross over yourself and then on the way up you're gonna be doing one two three one two three one two three one two three etc etc um the little ornament scale I guess I do on the top that's basically just a like the klezmer scale but which is why I was telling you to go look into klezmer if you're not familiar with it it's pretty obviously just like uh the klezmer scale with like a little bit of chromaticism on the top um important to note with that I do the chromatic scale fingering uh, for the C, C sharp, D, so, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, three, one is the fingering for that little, it's, but it's pretty, you're kind of slowed down at that point, so it doesn't need to be anything crazy, but I've been saying that because when we do the hymn in Hungarian harmonics, oh, shit, <laughs> that's what I get for not looking at the keys, it's basically that again, it's just a lot faster. So if you learn it with that fingering now, it's gonna save your headache later. Okay, um, and slide down. Uh, if you're not familiar with slides, I would say start using your your nails. Don't go straight in with your finger because you're gonna rip the shit out of your finger. Um, so you can uh, start with your thumbnail wherever, it doesn't matter, you're sliding down, right? And you can use your thumbnail to uh, take the, hit of the keys um you know i use the side of my finger because it's already calloused from doing this enough but uh start with your thumbnail and just kind of you don't have to do it hard either you're not you're not hammering into the keys on your way down you just just obviously not the tip of your nail because that's gonna hurt like a bitch um but the tip being the cuticle area don't do that. Just use the, you know, top part of your nail, nice and gentle. Practice it a little bit. Um, doesn't need to sound good, right? You're just like, like it's not, it's nothing. <laughs> like, don't overthink it like I did. I had to like watch YouTube tutorials on how to not rip your finger off in doing that. <laughs> so yeah, it's just, just be gentle with your hands. Don't hurt it. Um, cool. So. He collapsed with Stevens Johnson syndrome. Uh, this is really. That's the only thing where I do anything exciting. Uh, this verse section is gonna be your little breather. Uh, except for the fact that you're saying 500 words a minute, so you won't actually be able to breathe at any point, but hypothetically. So, he collapsed with Stevens Johnson syndrome on the ear floor, panic attack, anaphylactic, anachaxic. Okay, so now we're in, sorry, excuse me, uh, D major, I do a, a seven, so I have the C press down, one, two, four, five, in the right. Um, two options for the section, when I was playing it in my version, I did this. Uh, the way that Will normally plays it is... Oops. Uh, like that. Um, I, honestly, if I'm honest, I kind of like that better. But... If you want to play it more authentically, yeah, you're just, uh, it's the basically D major chord, and then your thumb is just going to be walking down. And then, uh, G, D, G, and then back to the regular verse. Um, if you want to do it the way I do, or you're shitty at playing this riff fast, <laughs> like I am, uh, D, and then just, so this is, like, you're just walking down, um, this is sounding on the offbeat, so. Cool, uh, back to the verse, or 
main section of the verse. Cycle this year, Mars, Trojan, horses, blood, brain, barrier, and reins. The early 50, yes, yes. And through fight, flight, revelation, shame, the black box warrior, he skipped his town and... Come on. Uh, the reason I don't like doing it like this is mostly because of this section here, because I like to jump back up here to play the C minor, and jumping from here up to here is very jarring. Um, so what you can do is, uh, now we're switching into G, so it's G minor for two beats, and then it switches into G major. So options here are G minor, and then up an inversion, so that's, now there's D in the bass, and, uh, G, B, and then when you jump up here for the C minor, it's, it's, you know, a lot nicer sounding, um, you can also just do, should some self for a reason, um, or if you're doing the walk down, like the bass walk down, like I was doing, um, So like that's that's why it's just less work. Obviously with your right hand because you're not playing a sixteenth note run down the keyboard. Um, yeah, that's that. Uh, so I had it down sixth string. Shields himself from reason in a Kevlar baby blue tuxedo Quote the friend the finest fiber is flesh and fiber glass and flowers as you go a mosquito Evil incarnate good incognito Pop placebo for a libido Screaming blast the torpedoes for what? Um, yeah, that's just the chords, you know And they're like similar, um Similar hand shape to what the left hand was doing at the beginning, you know, just keeping it nice and tight and close in the right hand, so I don't have to do very much work. Uh, and then the uh, the chorus. C, G, D, B5. And then, yeah, that's just a D, B. And then back up. Uh, and then uh, we're back to the intro. So I'm just going to breeze through this because we've already covered this. But yeah, I just played. I make it harder for myself because <laughs> I love pain. And oops. E flat. Who's wearing stolen rubber shoes or wrapped poison? I think it's round as loud as jugular when they came. I'm gonna breeze through this again because there's nothing until. Hungarian harmonics. Um, and a tattoo of a blue jay on his face. And he waited for his vital signs to lie on that flat line, cry him out in Hungarian har. Okay. Uh, him out in Hungarian har. Uh, this is. This is just hard. <laughs> like, there's no. You really, really gotta practice this bit. Um. So I just do that in the bass, or even just D bass. And then like I said, it's similar to the scale we did at the beginning. Actually, it's exactly the scale that we did at the beginning. Uh, my tip for this, to get it pseudo clean, um, like just really position yourself over the notes you're trying to hit. That sounds very weird, but like make an effort to move your elbow away from your body, give it lots of free movement. I know I said don't do that earlier, but do it in this case. 
um, shoulder, you know, like have it forward. Your left hand doesn't need any attention. It's it's a D base. It doesn't like or a D octave. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so like, accommodate this run with your arm. You know, like make it do yourself a favor. Make it easier for yourself by giving yourself lots of room to tuck under and do a little bit of that arm wrist movement, uh, elbow movement, especially when it comes to the, the little chromatic section there. Um, alternatively, if you can't play that, um, just do anything. <laughs> just do anything with a flat too, because that's the Hungarian harmonic in question is like pretty, it's a klezmer scale <laughs> so just do something with that flat two that major three you know anything that's gonna you, you could even do a triplet situation or actually you know like do whatever it sounds good you know um yeah uh yeah play around see what you like um you can hit that run oh my god <laughs> god tier i have slow fingers and am in constant awe of people who can play fast uh yeah so that's my tip for that little run there uh and then he popped his noggin through his stomach sang frothing sign happy birthday to the succulents i'll die your hydroponics Ribcage was a hornet's nest, palpitation set the beat as vagus nerve tricks had not an axle hitch a care bend. C G minor D and back down we go. hard for me for some reason um but i found that if you're struggling with it just dropping your wrist really low for some reason helps for me i don't know why that's it seems really antithetical to like is that a word whatever it seems very um like that shouldn't <laughs> fix it but for me it did uh dropping your wrist down into hell really helps me hit that a little bit uh, a little bit faster, about as fast as I need to, for the purposes of this. Um, honestly, if you're playing it at 145, 150, 160 even, like if you come from a classical background, your brain is going to be like, no, you have to play it super even the whole time. Dude, you are speed running this song. Like, you, you know, just get the notes. Like, they're going to, if, if you have a good sense of rhythm, which I assume you probably do if you're at this level, um, then your body's gonna kind of sort it out for you. Don't focus on being super even, like just just get the notes down, <laughs> just get it out, you know? It's, it's very, very hard to make it, like, unless you have fast fingers, in which case, again, I'm in awe of you and give me your talents. Um, but yeah, just drop, for me, drop the wrist low, um, for you, maybe it's get over the keys like you did with the other section. I don't know. Um, for me, this song, learning it was a lot of experimentation, like with my own body and physical limitations and like what was working, what wasn't adjusting, learning every time I learned a new riff. Um, so if something's not working, just keep trying it in different ways with different arm movement. Like it's not, this isn't just a finger on the instrument, right? Like your whole body is involved. So if something's not working and it's not going as fast as you need it to, uh, make small adjustments, try twisting your wrist a different way, you know? And that, that'll that get it. So anyway, um, all this to say. Uh, 
and then oops. this is just D minor and then we switch into kind of a or sorry G minor pseudo it's still G minor but you're just using an A as a passing note From here to here is an enormous jump. Uh, so if you don't want to put that D in the bottom, you can just do A. Like you don't need to kill yourself trying to get down there. Like just, it sounds like it's, it sounds fine. If you do that, it kind of sets yourself better for the octave climb up because you're, like you're already on A, you're all set. You don't have to kind of jump back up to go back down sort of thing. Um, that being said, I think it sounds a little bit more full with the D in the bottom, which is why I'm doing it. But in my recording on YouTube, like I fuck the D, no, I'm not doing that. Um, <laughs> I just did the single A note. So it's up to you, whatever sounds better, and uh, if you can make that jump, I think it sounds better personally, but obviously, oh my god, you totally don't have to. That's so far to jump. Uh, in like, literally one, I think it's a 16th at 152. Oh my god, oh my god, is that a jump. Okay, uh, then the octave climb up is, uh... Okay, that's sexy. tip for that is uh like I said my right hand knows what it's doing most of the time my left hand pretty incompetent so I just have to watch my left hand do it and my right hand kind of knows where it should be going like if I play you know if I'm doing an octave jump oh shit almost <laughs> like but like I have to look at my left hand whereas my right hand generally knows kind of how far it needs to be going for these things. So yeah, uh, only recommendation for this section, just pick the hand that's weakest. I assume your left hand, but I'm, you know, maybe it's not. Um, and just watch it like a hawk while it makes that octave climb up and your other hand's gonna know where it's going anyway. Um, and then we're back to the beginning basically. Uh, no B this time, C, so like there's, there's just no B that, so. And then back down, uh, obviously no writ, or um, no slow down on that one. <laughs> Uh, but it's not a terribly hard spot, so I don't think I need to go over anything crazy there. Uh, all right, the bridge. Hi, Editor D here, hello. Um, just wanted to pop in, uh, the bridge section here, I forgot to say it in the video, but, um, I was having, um, not insignificant amount of cramping in my left hand when I was playing the bridge section. Um, so just, I want to tell you all before you start learning this section that if you're getting um, severe cramps in your wrist or if you're feeling a lot of strain on your wrist, you need to be taking breaks. Um, this section in the left hand is really, 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 really physically demanding for your left hand, especially if you're not used to playing in this style. So um, Play it a bit. If there if there's a little bit of cramping, that's kind of expected because the section is so long and it is really repetitive, but I don't want anybody to get a repetitive strain injury or hurt their wrist or hurt their fingers or anything like that. So just do be very careful and tune in with your body. Make sure that you're not hurting yourself 
um, so that you can practice as much as you would like to for this piece and um, you you won't be doing damage to yourself in the long run. So um, that's it. <laughs> Not to scare you off of this section, just wanted to be honest, this section was really, really, really hard on my left hand. Make sure to tune in with yourself and your body and take breaks between practicing this section. Okay, cool. Back to the lesson. Bye. Thank you. You're just doing octaves. Um, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it's just like the offbeat is just the octave up. Uh, so it's G. Um, I'm... The note naming on this one is a little bit hard because there's not really a chord <laughs> to go... Like, the chords are weird. So I'm gonna just say note names and, like, if that's not how you're thinking of this, sorry about your luck. So G, B flat, C sharp, E, E flat, A, C sharp, F sharp. Um, at this point, it's a little bit of a free for all in the in the right hand. Feel free to improv if you're good at that. I'm not. Um, I find. That sounds kind of fun if you do the, the, I literally don't remember what that's called, but Ralentendo, I think, whatever. The, the jumps between the two in the right hand. You can just do it on G the whole time. Like, like I said, the chords are a little wishy-washy on this. There's not really a chord here. You're just sort of jumping up and down. Um, so this is not, not a note in any of the chord situations that you're doing because there aren't really any. Um, that's a lie. You know, this this is definitely a chord. That sounds like shit. That's definitely a chord, and that's definitely a chord, but like, whatever, it's fine. G's fine. Um, yeah, uh, so this section for the left hand sucks, if I'm honest. Um, for me, I really struggle when I'm playing it that fast with hitting, like, my right hand, or sorry, my right hand, <laughs> my thumb is following really quickly after, almost like it's a, like a, you know, it, it's, no, it, it, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and, so, um, for me, the way to <laughs> slow down my thumb was, uh, literally just flapping my wrist out more to make the distance between my thumb and the key further. So this is not going to make a lot of sense unless I do a demo. So sorry. Duh. So this was before. Obviously I'm overemphasizing. Um, whereas like now... Really, I was creating a lot of distance between my thumb and the key, so it had more time to travel down to the the note, the octave note that it needed to get to, so that it would s make it more even. So it would be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and like you can like if I'm playing something fast, I'm almost never giving myself that much room with my thumb. Oh my god, is that a far distance to travel? You want to usually keep it really, really tight and close to the keys, but this, like, I was having a lot of trouble controlling when my thumb was hitting the key, so I started twisting my wrist to give myself a little bit more distance. I hope that makes sense to you. Um, maybe this isn't a problem that anyone else has, so happy for you again. Uh, yeah, and the right hand, like I said, is just kind of do whatever you want. Um, yeah, if you can improv good while act, like focusing really heavily on your left hand. I'm very impressed. Um, I can't though, so I was just doing G octaves, or you can even just do, like, you don't even need to do the octaves, you can just do one of them. Um, and the reason I like doing the G octaves is because now my hand is already set up for when the right hand comes in. It's already on the G, my thumb's already there. So I don't need to think about looking away from my left hand who, oh my god, desperately needs me to look at it, <laughs> to try and set my right hand up in the spot where it needs to be. So I can just kind of, you know...
probably say finger ring in the right hand. Uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five. And then fourth on the E flat, third on the C sharp, and then obviously the thumb's on that F sharp, and then slides up, so. Okay, so that's the bridge, um, and then it kind of gets to the breakdown where we do the, the chromatic step up in the left hand. Uh, okay. I don't know that I have the chords exact, but I think I've got them this time. Uh, so uh, I'm going to play it last time through. Oh, sorry. I skipped an entire section. Uh, the that is just what I'm hitting there. One, two, four, five. Uh, it's basically just like this note, this note, this note, and like these two. Like it's, it's just what you would be playing already. It's a, it's a, as a chord. And then uh, C sharp in the bass, and it's a G diminished seventh with a C sharp in the bass, or sorry, technically D flat, but C sharp in the bass uh, is what I've been calling it this whole time. <laughs> and um, so G diminished seventh, if that's an uncommon term or unfamiliar term, that's G, B flat, D flat, and E natural. I know those aren't the actual note names, for a diminished seventh, I have a music theory degree, I'm aware, but just for ease sake, that's how I have to think of it when I'm playing it this quickly. <laughs> so uh, D flat or C sharp in the bass and uh, G, B flat, D flat, E. And then you're really just gonna walk your diminished seventh up a semitone. So D now in the bass and we've got G sharp, B natural, D natural and F natural. And then now we're doing uh, D sharp and or E flat in the bass, and we've got in the right hand A, C, D sharp, F sharp. And then we're finishing on E, and we're not doing a diminished seventh anymore. I'm switching down to a um, major chord with the seven. So, sorry, an E7. <laughs> Don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> with an E in the bass, so uh there and now we're in a minor so i'm gonna play that through one more time with less talking <laughs> so you can see what i'm doing that's not right yes it is i guess it's just something people do and then another e seven Back down. Okay, so now that we're in A minor, um, the rest of the chords of the song are gonna be uh, A minor and then A major in that little section where it's like for two beats. Uh, D minor, E7. Those are gonna be the chords we're working with now. Uh, so, a bloody knife to split your infrastructure line with your motor function, quite a machinations of the dead. E7, animus, karate, chop your abacus and learn to be an animal instead. But I never you think you're better than this, your modus operandi causes Nazi scoptism and suicide. E, I don't self be true when it is you who are the problem, not the things you do. Things you do with something sick inside. A major, lithium and dialectics. Boy, you really are an effect of CBT. Don't seem effective for that cluster B. A major, or, or <laughs> A major again there. Offer up your innocence. Please ignore the side effects. You've lost your mind and almost lost your life before, so you'll be fine for what? Um, for this section, you can theoretically. Um, 
do that again. Um, like, yeah, you, you just saw me play it. So it's that, but it's up a key. So D and A, B, C, and then that would be what it looks like. I personally don't do that. I don't like it. But if you want to, those are the notes. Um, so for what, for what it's worth, they were gonna get your boy, they would up by now. For what, for what, for what it's worth, there's no good looking back. And why would you want to look back at me? And it's no good looking back, so try to look forward now. Uh, then the old up the octave trick. And also I do double time is kind of a loose term here, but instead of doing eighth notes in the right hand, I'm doing sixteenths. Is that right? I don't, I don't know. It's, it's twice as, there's two times as many in the right hand. Uh, two options for the end there. Well, I'm going to talk about that more. Uh, you can go down to E and then jump up to A if you'd like. Uh, you can also do G sharp in the bass. Um, I think G sharp is fine. Um, it's obviously not as strong of a, you know, Beethoven ending, if you're doing the lowest note being a G sharp, but uh, honestly, I think it's fine. I think it sounds fine. Um, but if you don't like the way it sounds, E is right there and up to A. Uh, the other option is uh, looking up. Sorry, hold on. <laughs> You also have the option doing it like that, you know, going from the D, going up to this F, E, and then A. Um, personal preference, it's up to you. Uh, the fingering for the ending rift, I use a different fingering than I do with the when it's in G minor. Uh, I use the the thumb fingering versus the crossing over fingering. So A minor, B, there's F sharp here, so just watch out for that. Oops, jeez. <laughs> and then you're done. And you've completed this song. And if you've gotten this far in the video and you've been learning it, I'm so proud of you. Uh, l like I said, this song, uh, I've been playing piano for like almost 20 years and the song still took me like a solid six and six plus months to learn. Um, it's not easy at all. Uh, so if you're trying and maybe you're not there all the way yet, but you're trying your best to play it. I'm wow. I'm so impressed with you, and you're probably doing a really great job. And uh, I'm so glad that you found such joy in this music, like I did, because it really is such a, a fabulous piece, song, whatever. Um, yeah, I I'm gonna stop talking in a sec before I say something embarrassing. But um. I trained in classical, I didn't train in jazz, so if I said some of the chord names a little bit weird, it's because I'm my brain doesn't know what the triangle means on the lead sheet. It's confusing and alarming to me. <laughs> um, so yeah, so sorry if I was using weird weird chord names or note names and stuff. I'm, uh, it, I'm a little out of my wheelhouse here, but um, 
hopefully that was very helpful to you and I wish you luck on your piano journey. Goodbye!